Oh, my word. Never before has there been so much to talk about for a team with such insignificance or minimal impact on an NFL season, let alone the postseason, which we are just days away from. Yet, dare I say, Andrew, we have more going on right now in the wide world of Patriots Nation than I think any one podcast, radio program, TV show, blog, any of it could possibly contain. But we will do our absolute best to summarize and put a bow on the season and then start to preview this wild offseason, which is already underway. Hello, everyone. How are you? It's the latest six rings in football. Thanks. Brought to you by our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel, make every moment more. FanDuel.com slash six rings now to take advantage of some of their awesome same game parlays and no sweat first bets as you make your way into a really, really interesting and wide open NFL postseason. There will be no more Patriots bet of the week, so I'm sorry. You'll have to find other ways to hashtag fade Fitzy. Or maybe you can just follow Hart at Jumbo Hart because he seems to be doing pretty well with his little uh, pocket gamble. Uh, yeah. Last we, couple of days, we took a little bit of a turn, but it yeah, happened. We got a, yeah, well, listen, sometimes we get cold at the table. It's best to walk away. You know, yep. know your limits. I might take a break. Yep. I might take a break today and just, just sit back because and I also <laughs> got into... Today. Oh, oh, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. I also got into a little trouble of you, can't, you shouldn't bet with your heart. Like, I was rooting for mm. Michael Penix in Washington. So I'm like, oh, I'll just throw a little something on them. In my head, I knew very little chance they were going to win. I had yeah. very little faith they were going to win. I was just, it was dumb. It was dumb. Yeah. You wanted to see him win, but that's the thing. Yeah. Don't be an emotional better. You have to be cool, calm, and calculating about Use it. Use your brain. Bet be Belichickian. Your brain, not... Be Belichickian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Ruth. Indeed. Well, except for the winning part. Keep winning. <laughs> Okay, yeah, try to keep winning, but also be calculating and ruthless nonetheless. Uh, on today's podcast, we'll quickly give out grades for the Jets game, if you want to call it that, last Sunday. Uh, yeah, we should it, tell people because they didn't go, so they might not know what happened. No, well, and also, if you watched on TV, you didn't have to, like, send the kids up to fix the antenna or bang on the side of the flat screen. Like, that wasn't static. It no, literally looked no, no, That was, snow. That was snow. And I it looked it. in... On your television, it looked just the same at the stadium. Like if you were down on the field level or if you were up in a suite or anywhere in between, it it looked like a scrambled television picture IRL as well. It was a surreal scene to say the least. Disappointing to many, obviously not in just that the Jets won 17 to three. But Andy, I feel like that. So in the first half, we will do our grades for the game and our grades for the season. Second leg, holy smokes. Pats, Perry, Bills, Bill Perry. Belichick, Perry, McDaniels, Perry. What else you want to talk? We got it all in the second leg. So don't you guys go anywhere. And a, and a note as well, just because we don't have any more Patriots games to discuss, it doesn't mean that six rings of football things will be going anywhere. No. <laughs> Au contraire, mon football frere. We will be here on the regular. We'll do playoff pods. I, I actually look forward almost just to even doing NFL podcasts where we don't sweat the Patriots and worry about the future of Belichick craft at all as much so if you're up for robust football chats this is your place with your pals Fitzy and Hart and our many guests to come this offseason um Andy I, I will say this before we get to the grades quickly on the game and then the season overall the game did really lack like we talked about will they have Belichick on the jumbotron is Matthew Slater gonna get a play on offense like you you had opined for give him the holy trinity let him play special teams offense and defense go the through the full gamut of his career because he did catch a pass. He did score a touchdown on special teams, and that's what likely will punch his ticket to Canton. And he played safety at times early in his NFL career when the Patriots were rice paper thin in the secondary. And yet still, nothing special for him. No big Belichick moment, whether it was the lack of attendance, the wintry conditions, the wind, the snow. You saw a bunch of shirtless dudes on the Jumbotron at times, but there was never like... I, I don't know. There was never that sort of like Bill Belichick. Like I, I it's it, whether it was the crowd's disinterest, uh, it was again, I feel like if it was 35 degrees, but it wasn't like wind going this way is snow fell this way. And you're, you just had a face full of everything. There probably would have been, I think something as well. Cause I doubt the 30 some odd thousand in attendance were all convinced like, yeah, he's not going anywhere. Most of the people there that day believed he wasn't. But I can't imagine that's the reason why. There was just nothing there. No buzz. My None. favorite song from Jesus Christ Superstar. What's the buzz? Tell me what's that. There was no buzz. No buzz at all. You didn't even have to wonder what the buzz was because the buzz was buzzless. Um, I was a little disappointed. You know this. I was very disappointed in the fans. Mm -hmm. I thought it was an embarrassing uh, um, day for 
Foxborough faithful because I do think it was so widely reported that it was Bill's last game. You got to show up. And the opportunity was there for sort of an iconic image with the snow and Bill and who knows. You start a chant. Maybe he reacts. You never know. Like you, maybe you get one of those Grinch like smile, like all of a sudden. And we'll never know because A, it was half empty. And B, I don't believe there was a single anything. No, there was nothing. And he also came out into the field wearing, if you're watching on YouTube or whatnot now, uh, you can see like I'm covering my face because he had one of those like scuba Tom yep. fa like face guards on and he took it down for the game. And then as he walked off the field, the hood was pulled overhead. He put like his neoprene face guard back over. You yep. literally only saw the eyes of the emperor as he made his way off top. This is inappropriate, but it reminded me of a perp walk. Somebody like being handcuffed, <laughs> taken in, like trying to no, hide their identity. It's, not, it's all right. No, that's right. what it seems like. And I'm like, not, and, and in juxtaposition to that, you had Derek Henry on the field in Tennessee, like taking the microphone and addressing the crowd. And, and it was and awesome. He's a player with a different personality. And that's, and also, by the way, there's no yeah. guarantee Bill is gone, but even I, I felt like he could have even just, you know, a slight wave. Thanks for the support this mm -hmm. season. Anything like you don't have to say you're retiring or you're fired or anything. I just you're right. It left. I think everybody wanting more. It was it was very, very, very. I'm going to add two more varies. Very, very disappointing for me. Yeah, it was just it was. And that's the whole thing. Like the game itself sucked. The outcome. I mean, to those who want who were tankathoners and want the Patriots to get a better draft pick. I guess that was the one positive for you on the day. The Patriots now. Head in as they reminded you on their social media as well. Nothing I'd really be boasting about coming off the uh, season that was. Life throws you lemons. You got to make lemonade. Yeah, or or cake or pie or something. My or God, throw it back. <laughs> <laughs> so the Patriots do have the number three overall pick, but it was a energy free, mostly lifeless kind of just blah day at the ballpark. Your final score, obviously seventeen to three. First win for the Jetropolitans over the Patriots. Since December of 2015, a game that went to overtime, a game that, if I may remember, since I like to be a mild historian of the New England Patriots and the way certain games in recent history affected the team, that's a game they absolutely blew, uh, just like they blew the week later as well. They had two chances to win a game against an AFC East rival and get the number one seed. They didn't. And then, of course, we know what happened when they went to Denver for that AFC championship as well. Uh, that would, dare I say, that was not some of uh, Belichick's finest coaching. Um, in a career that is littered with great moments, uh, historic achievements, and amazing leadership. Um, all right, let's just rifle through some of the grades on the Jets game. Um, the offense, F. Uh, yeah, that, was, honestly, we're not joking. Like, you just get an F. You, Zeke could barely run. The effort was there. F. It, you know what I'll give him? We'll give him an F Ert. Okay, they, I'll take they that. They tried. They tried. They just stink. They. <laughs> I mean, and it was worse than it even looked. Zappy again tried to throw picks on like three of his first five passes or whatever the hell it was of the day. And then he saved those for later. And then you had the weird pick that was a fumble that you got it back. And then Zappy's like, no, 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 I didn't want to be out here anymore. So I'm going to throw another pick <laughs> me... to get off the field. <laughs> Guys, I, I tried to tell you, I don't want this. Yeah, they, um, um, they, they were, they were not good. They couldn't block. No. I know they had a makeshift offensive line. Jake Anders is in there. Verdarian, right. don't call me be low, blow, low. Um, was in there, and Quinn and Williams is a dude. Some other guy. Oh, he, is the, he is the dude. As far as defensive tackles go, you know, and I'm sure that's the kind of money Barmore would love to see make his way. He's, uh, I think uh, Quinn and Williams is in the first year of a uh, four-year $96 million extension. He earns every penny of it. Also, don't touch him on on his uh, on his head, Joe Flacco. He didn't like, he didn't like that at all. Um, he's a dude and a half, really. Yeah, Bless you, is. thank you. He is for sure. Nothing from the offense. Nothing. One one nice catch from Jalen Rager. Literally, that's about it. Mac Jones, he's your third quarterback. Whether that was getting Nathan Rourke a little something for the effort, if that was an FU from Belichick to Mac or Kraft or whomever, you can make of it what you will. We're not here to thoroughly speculate beyond uh, just any sort of suggestions therein. Uh, you also had Tyquan Thornton as a healthy scratch once again. This kid's career is just like... It's over before it began. I mean, he's just been he's been on the shelf here. There never no major positive contributions. Our pal John Lyons, who's been doing a, an excellent job at WEI Andy. I'm not sure if you saw this. He has a thread right now um, uh, highlighting all the, the blown plays by receivers 
all season long and how in a season full of a lot of more one score games than I think a lot of people realize wide receiver play really damned the Patriots as much as anything else. Maybe no. not as much. Well, all right, let me ask you this pa you, power rank, which position really damned the offense most you're going to go. Is it, would you go quarterback receiver O line or how would you, I would go. I mean, this is going to be controversial, but it's what I do. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I'd go O-line, quarterback, receiver. Because I think the O-line, I think the O-line's negative impact on the results of the regular season started in the summer. I think somewhere along the line, the coaches, the players, Mac realized, holy crap, do we blow on the offensive line. Like, I mean, Adrian Clem is fighting the GM or whatever the hell Mac Rose role Rose, is, president yeah. of player personnel. Um, Early on, like, I think it didn't take getting to the regular season and failing for them to have a negative impact on this team. I thought it started before then. They were a black cloud that hung over the offense. And you know I'm a butterfly effect guy. If that changes, does that change Mac? If mm -hmm. Mac changes, does that change receivers? Like, does it all come together? I'm not saying they would have ever been, you know, the greatest show on turf or anything like that, but they might not as of been as abysmal so i would go line quarterback wide receiver believe it or not i think i'm actually and not just because uh, if anything it probably doesn't make good broad or pod um i'm gonna agree with you because i think it all starts in the it all starts in the trenches and the offensive line was thoroughly offensive from day one in camp well before that when we were ringing all the bells and the alarms even before the draft that it was ghastly. They were trending towards being the worst offensive line in history through the first half of the season. It improved a little bit, but still, I think everything from the uh, the ground up or from the line out sucked. And I believe not. the offensive line is a lot like the first quarter. I've always said this: the old cliche, you can't uh -huh. win a game in the first quarter, but you can lose it. Sure. I believe you can't win a game because of your offensive line, but you can sure as poo lose a game because of your offensive line. Oh, hell and I think yeah. this team was an example of that. Yep. Uh, the receivers, not great as well. Obviously, quarterback play beyond subpar. But anyway. All right. So for the Jets game, offense F. Defense, I gave him a B. I gave him a C. Um, I thought the run defense was a little uh, less stout than I'd like it to be. Brees mm -hmm. Hall um, was basically the Jets offense. I mean, this was a bad game offensively for both teams. Trevor oh, Simeon God, yeah. stinks. Um yep. And I thought Brees Hall kind of controlled the game, and then he put the game away with the long run. Um, so the run defense was not, I think, up to their standards, which I don't fault them. Season finale, like in the snow. Fast all of guy that. on the outside, tough sledding, tough footwork, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. So I gave him a C. I thought they were, they were fine defensively, but, you know, if you're going to win that game, the defense was going to have to win it, and they couldn't do it. Special teams? I actually gave them a B. Um, Same. I didn't think they were terrible. I thought for the most part, Barringer was good. Now the numbers were different, but it was tough conditions. He even saved a, a questionable snap at one point to get the kickoff. Um, Ryland made his field goal um, to which Rich Keefe wondered, which team is he rooting for? Which team is he trying to help out? Cause he was in the <laughs> tank mode there. Um, and the one thing I will continue to pop up, I don't know what to make of my guy, Brendan Schooler. I like him. I like the energy, the effort, and the attitude. But mm -hmm. just if he's going to – he's had more flags and more like scuffles and kerfuffles in mm -hmm. like a year and a half than Matthew Slater had in a decade and a half. And right. I don't really know what to make of that. Is he out of control? Is he kind of a dink? Is he oversensitive? Like what exactly goes on with Schooler in those 10 seconds of every special mm -hmm. team's play? But – that's something to keep an eye on moving forward, but I would say on the list of the team's priorities and worries, that's probably pretty low down the list. All, all things considered, yeah, might want to worry about that. Should we do an hour on that? On, yeah, let's uh, do a hard, hard hour. Yeah. Shift. <laughs> Everybody exactly. else is talking about Belichick and the GM and Kraft. We're talking about Brendan Schooler and how he gets his attitude under control. That's right. We're on this Saturday, 12 to 3, so from 1 to 2, six ring special teams power hour. Let's go, bro. Uh, I agree with you, though. Like, I, I appreciate the energy, effort, and attitude, but someone's going to need to maybe get a restraining collar or put a restraining bolt on him there or just at least tell him to, like, cool his jets a little bit because it's it's a long season. It is a marathon, not an emotional sprint, Brendan. Uh, Coach D. 
Yeah. Coaches. That's Bill and the coaches, the overall coaching. Um, I would say D. Um, offensively, yeah. nothing. nothing. Defensively, you were fine. Special teams, meh. I also, I kind of blame Bill. He gets downgraded here for Oh, so you're the guy that blames Bill. Huh? No, no, no. I mean post game, the whole thing. Like, just tip your cap, even if people don't notice it. Like on your way off the field, just do it because it's the right thing to do. Kind of how thing. about just thank even if it doesn't mean like don't even like look too deeply into this. How about just a simple thanks for showing up how whoever showed up today all season? You know, he said, like, well, it's not my responsibility. Like, yes, he said in the post game, and then he said again on Monday morning, like, this is unacceptable for all of us not to the standard we expect or that is demanded around here. I appreciate that. It's it. It's not illegal to wave to the fans or to just make some sort of gesture. How about just, you know, like when soccer players, yes, to the fans, whether they win or lose, like, thank you for showing up. Thank you for being a part yeah. for paying our checks. And what it's a you? season finale. So you don't have to say I'm done. It's over, whatever it, the season is over. The 2023 season has concluded. So you can just acknowledge their efforts and what they brought to you and what you appreciate for this mm -hmm. season or this game even. Even mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I just would have liked to have seen something. But he's Bill Belichick. So same, bro. You take what same, you get. Same, same, same. Uh, yeah. And the quarterback I gave a D minus to. D minus. I just, I just for trying. How I, did he get out of F area? <laughs> just for trying. A little extra F ert. So I gave what it is like this effing T ball. No, I get like literally a 60. Like if it's going to be a number, like if, if failing is 59 and below, I gave him a 60. Oh, I give him a 59 and below. Give him an F. <laughs> I, I thought he was bad. Um, yeah. Really great. bad. I thought even at times he continues, you know, we ripped Mac for showing body language, showing guys up. To, uh, Bailey Zappi has done more of that as his tenure as the starting quarterback went on, showing frustration for where receivers are, what they're doing. Who like, among us wouldn't, though, Andy, given given the... Oh, I know. But part one of his strengths was he wasn't doing that. Like, he wasn't going down the Mac road until he went down right. the Mac road. So, um, and turnover-worthy plays. PFF can jam it up your ass however many you counted. <laughs> there were a boatload of them. There were a boatload of them, including the ones that actually were turnovers, which sometimes PFF ignores those, too. Um Oof. Yeah, Bailey Zappi, yeah. not good. Okay. Not not great. Yep, those are the grades that were expected. And now we move into the season-long grades, Andy. Uh, I know we went over the team statistical leaders on Sunday. The stats have been since adjusted to reflect uh, Sunday's game as well. Uh, I apologize for my broadcasting error saying Ramondre finishes the top rusher. It was indeed Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, I can, I, how many people won money if there was some sort of propositional somewhere that Zeke would have had more rushing yards than Ramondre. I mean, people were so many of the preseason. I mean, so many things in the NFL went sideways this year. It's still, even though these playoffs may be phenomenally entertaining, like I, I can't, I'm so excited for Browns, Texans. I'm inordinately excited for Browns, Texans, Lions, Rams. Whoever this said that. I, can you that? Browns, Texans. They're kicking off with, I know they probably thought like, oh, let's just get this one out of the way. Like, no. You may be putting the best game of the weekend on Saturday at 4:30. At least it's not on the cock, so you don't have to worry about. There's all, all that's what the kids call peacock. That's the yeah. nickname for it. That's what all oh, the cool kids rotated. call it. Why don't they call it the pea? <laughs> Somehow that's actually grosser. You know what happens uh, when the pea and the cock come together? All right, all right, all right. What it's I'm a sorry, network. I'm, just, I'm you sorry. You have the word We've, peacock. Right. I don't know what you're thinking. I, I, my mind is certainly not in the gutter. A lot of questionable things have been said on this podcast recently. It's almost like something is emboldening us to be a little brasher on the podcast or on the airwaves. I wonder what that could be all about. Oh, just a couple of morally bankrupt guys. Anyway. Interesting word uh, choice. <laughs> thank you very little. Oh, this team has broken all of us. How early and then some. start collecting social security? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I have a, dare I say, a real pension for uh, making bad jokes on the podcast and the yes. airwaves as well. Good job, everybody. All right. Um, grades on the season overall. Quickly, I will ru run through uh, your passing leader on the season, Mac Jones. I thought it was a sure, like, his pro his passing prop was 3,199 yards, I believe. Um. He came in way under that, so Vegas probably cashed in on that. Mac Jones's passing touchdown prop, which I put money on and lost, 
was only 19 and a half touchdowns. Amazing. For shame. Uh, unbelievable. As a uh, team, he, they didn't get it. That's what's more amazing. Not only no, the they Mac barely did. They got thirty three. They got thirty three hundred and ninety two passing yards, which is gas. No touchdowns. Oh no, not even close. No, they, they only got sixteen. A, they didn't Jesus. have a passing touchdown per game in the National Football League in the God's year of freaking twenty twenty three with Bill O'Brien organizing the offense. Yeah, they are offensive. So thirty three hundred thirty three uh, thirty three ninety two passing yards total. Mac had twenty one twenty. Bailey Zappi had twelve uh, twelve seventy two. Sixteen passing touchdowns. Twenty one interceptions. That is pathetic. Uh, Zeke was your leading rusher with six hundred forty two yards. Pop Douglas, your leading receiver with five hundred sixty one yards. Jawan Bentley, your leading tackler at one hundred fourteen. Jabril Peppers, your interception leader with two. Los Just dos. Two. Just dos picks. Dos. And your touchdown reception leader. Of, I just realized my son had the same number of touchdown passes as the uh, entire Patriots team. Holy in Far less games. Andy, I would honestly probably feel better if Jackson Hart was the quarterback next year than Mac Jones or Bailey Zappi. Honest to God. He would, At least be, one would, of those be, he would be one of those athletic quarterbacks that everybody would love for like two weeks and then they'd start to like him less as the weeks went on. Yeah, I know. Just like, and here we go. Jackson Mahomes running for his life again, scampering through. Um, and your touchdown receptions leader, six for Hunter Henry, who missed the final three games of the season. Uh, all right. Sick he have? Did he have 12? Uh, let me see. Where I, I believe not, but just to make sure, uh, young Michael Gesicki had two. Oh, so Dude. is there a one missing? Did you accidentally cross out the one? That was just the two? It's on screen. Let me just fix that little smudge right there. Uh, nope. He finished with 29 receptions for 244 yards, 8.4 yards per reception, and two touchdowns. He only Game came breaker. up 10 shy of me losing my bet that I made. <laughs> uh, all right. So <laughs> what a wild and crazy guy. All right. Um, Let's go with our, our grades overall on the season. Same way, offense, defense, special teams, coaching, and quarterbacks. Uh, I'm going to start with the offense. I'm going to give the offense an F. Well, I'm going to one-up you and say, you can't spell offense without two Fs. So <laughs> I don't give two Fs about how good they They suck. They were terrible. Oh, my God. No, really. Like, this is one of – this is the worst. So, statistically, it was the worst offense in New England Patriots history. This was, I would say, tell me if uh, I'm being hyperbolic when I say it's at least of this decade, 2020 on in the COVID year and beyond. This is the worst offense we've seen in the NFL thus far this decade. Uh, probably. I mean, I don't, you know, we don't watch every minute of every game of every year, but the lack of weapons, the mm -hmm. lack of quarterback, like the totality of everything that went into it, the turnovers, the frustrations. Even a guy like Ramondre, who I think we all thought would be a foundational piece and like you kind of yep. know what you're going to get, yep. was not very good early in the year running the football. Um, again, offensive line, a big part of that, I believe. And I think they got into his head and he started running differently. Mm -hmm. But they were bad. And now I'm an apologist. Most people would just say uh, somehow Billy O'Brien took Matt Patricia's offense and made it worse. He sucks. He's overrated. He can't do this. He can't do that. I... I think it was very much personnel based. I think Bill O'Brien could not, and maybe this is a shot at him, could not overcome his limitations personnel wise. Nope. So here we are. And in the Herald piece, we read about the dust up between Adrian Clem and Matt Groh. Uh, we heard of frustrations with Bill O'Brien not being able to bring in all of his own coordinators, assistants, personnel guys, et cetera. I imagine that the, he's the, they call him the teapot, right? I imagine. Yeah. There must have been like for him to at least maintain his composure the way he did this season, at least, or that we didn't hear about more dust ups and scuffles and outbursts from Billy O'Brien behind the scenes is a testament to either his professionalism or the fact that he saw what he was working with and was like, F this. I'm not even going to get that. I think invested. it was that you, the latter. you started calling it resignation instead of Patriot yes, Nation. Correct. Um, I think at some point he was probably because usually. I mean, what do we tell kids? If a coach yells at you, if he's hard on you, it's because he sees better. He sees right. greatness. He wants you to achieve better. Mm -hmm. I think Bill O'Brien at some point probably said, there ain't no better in this offense. We stink. We have don't have the personnel anywhere to be that good. What's the point of me screaming at and being a bully and being a hothead when there's no there there, as they say, of Oakland? Right. 
No, I, I, I agree. I think, I think he basically at some point was just like, am I going to take minutes, hours, or days off of my life trying to, you know, squeeze blood from this particular stone? Right. No, no, I'm not losing any sleep over this one. And I, and I, I quite honestly kind of don't blame him. Um, let's see, moving on. Uh, so we both gave the offense an F on the season. How about the defense? I gave him, uh, considering what they were working with, I gave him a B. I gave him an A. Good, um, uh, good for you. I don't think they could have fought a better fight. B-plus. I don't think they could do- have done a better job fighting human nature. Mm-hmm. Um, they they did not have an offense. The offense put them in terrible position game after game, quarter after quarter, drive after drive, that I roll that into the numbers and the points and the things. I mean, yeah, there were games they gave up a lot of points. Obviously, pick sixes and other things were part of that, but also – you know, it just snowballed the wrong way. I'm not saying they were the perfect defense with my A, but I'm giving them a lot of leeway for two best players mm-hmm. gone. And offense Early. offense actually working against you. Offense trying to make your life harder seemingly at every step. And guys like Jabril Peppers, Jelani Tavai, Christian Barmore, they just fought to the effing finish. So mm-hmm. maybe I'm a sucker. Alex maybe Austin. I'm- the, Alex like, Austin guys, coming on, making plays like guys like that that we don't mm-hmm. even know who they are, and then they're right. like on the, that other guy, uh, Marco. Somebody he had a last. Um, name. Oh yeah, yeah, the safety that came. Uh, Mar- uh, yeah, Marco Wilson. He Marco had a last Lewis, name. Man. He does. Yeah, we'll just call him Marco <laughs> Paulo. Uh, but guys like Mac Wilson uh, coming through and actually yep. having probably his best season to date. And I'll give them. Um, I, all right, a, a B plus from me, A from you. I'll give them an A also for attitude and the energy, effort, and attitude of uh, Andy Hart's grading system, or at least what he's what he wants to see as fan and coach. Guys like Adrian Phillips saying, "Oh, we gave up ten points last week. That's not going to be good enough. We're going to have to give up seven or none next week." Like these guys took the absolute crap sandwich that they were being served regularly by their offense, and instead of if anyone, God bless him for not slinging mud, starting fights, throwing the offense under the bus. They didn't complain, Andy. Like this is let this be like a kids should have to like watch game tape or listen to the Patriots defenders and their pressers avails and beyond because they didn't complain. They didn't throw the offense under the bus. They didn't whine about having to go out there and do their job time and time and time again. Um, They just went out and did it. So Bravo to the New England Patriots defense 2023 for being one of the better units in the NFL and showing what leadership um, and putting forth a professional being a professional is all about Uh, your special teams on the season. Uh, I gave him a C. I thought it was very middle of the road. Now, Mm -hmm. obviously your rookie kicker stinks. Your Mm -hmm. rookie punter, pretty good. Yep. Um, had some disappointing snaps at times from, as you like to call him, the highest paid long snapper. I'm not even sure it's actually true. I know he's in the mix uh, technically, but we'll just go with it because it he makes gets for a over a million time. dollars to do one job. If I just had one job. Um, and overall, I mean, Jalen Rager gave them a little yep. boost. I actually thought Miles Bryant late in the year did a good job on punt returns for the most he part. Held him. Remember? A couple of years ago, was that last year where he sucked early in the year? Or was that two years ago? He uh, sucked early no, it was last year. And then Marcus Jones took over and look yeah, what we got. Okay. So overall, now you didn't get the return on investment in coverage with Chris Board, Cody Davis, Matthew Slater, Brendan School, the whole damn did you, team. Did Chris Board's name get mentioned once this year? Um, I'm sure it did. I don't recall, but I'm sure it did. I that, don't recall either. And I feel bad because I don't want to like. He's a special teamer in the NFL. Just because Bill Belichick signed you when maybe he shouldn't have or wasted money and time in a roster gave you, spot. Gave you a tongue his, bath last year. and yeah, like, It's not his tongue. fault. I don't want to rip Chris Board. He's probably a nice man. Got to right. tell you, honestly, I don't like. I don't think I could pick Chris Board out of a lineup. I don't believe I, don't I remember I ever seeing him speak. or Nope. Like, I don't I, think I saw a clip with him. I don't think I saw a yeah. press, anything. If you lined up all however many remaining players on the roster, 60-something players on the roster and, and practice squad, and said, Andy, you can have $1 million if you pick Chris Board out of this room, mm-hmm. I'd be like, damn it, I would have liked to have had a million bucks. <laughs> you put like you put like Chris Board, a bunch of guys you don't really hear much from, like Alex Austin, yeah. uh, Sean Wade. I, I just never heard from them, so I wouldn't know. Like, I can tell you what Adrian Phillips looks like. I, I saw him speak. I've listened to him. Uh, a lot of the other guys as well. Like, 
Yeah, I'm with you on that one, man. Uh, special team C seems appropriate. Ryland stunk, to say the least. Uh, Will he be Barringer, back? Barringer's the only guy, by the way, to have gotten any Pro Bowl votes. He finished seventh in and the really popular punter voting. He shouldn't. I know, really but like, I think at least yet. he became a thing. People like his look, too. He's got some drip. Got, maybe he has a, even a little riz. Who knows? Will Ryland be back? I'm going to say 50-50. Can I get an answer? Yes. Ryland will be back. I agree. Ryland will be back. I'm not Literally. saying he makes the season. No. He'll be back in the spring and summer. Yes, and he will be, there will be, for all we know, they may, we went over free agent kickers before, for all we know, a Greg Zerline will get signed away from the Jets. Legatron may, uh, he's one of many free agent kickers. Fairbairn, I believe, is a free agent as well. I'll, you'll see a veteran competing with Ryland. I doubt they'll draft another kicker. I sure as hell hope not. Quick uh, Greg Zerline story. My son caught one of his halftime warm-up kicks, but in doing so, slipped and hit his face on a seat and had to go to the uh, med room for a bloody lip. You're sh kidding me. <laughs> no. His whole Your life, son all, almost all has got stitches all... because he caught a Legatron ball? Yep. Yep. Wow. <laughs> what a Sunday. What a, what what a, a, that's what, what he said. So much like, Dude, stuff. literally... That like literally, what a weird day! Like your son bloodying his face was like the highlight of the fan experience. Yep. Jesus, mercy, and Joe. Pretty I'm much, glad he's okay. Uh, coaching on the season, D, fair grade. Um, defensively, I think we all have praise for Gerard Mayo, Steve Belichick, and mm -hmm. whatever portion of that credit goes to Bill Belichick on that side of the ball. Offensively. I think Billy O'Brien fought the good fight, but realized at some point the personnel stinks. Cer certainly by the Herald story, um, he had uh, lack of faith or frustrations with the coaches working beneath him mm -hmm. from the get-go because he didn't really want all of them and all how that played out. Um, Bill Belichick, I think, mismanaged the quarterback position from day one, um, whether it's Malik Cunningham not being a quarterback, cutting all the quarterbacks, his treatment of Mac Jones. Mm -hmm. Everything was kind of a debacle. So put it all together, and I think the defensive coaches lift it to a D. Yeah, I just, I don't, I don't know what it was about this year that just, I never felt like anyone was going to be able to like coach their way out of this mess. I never, like, you, like we talked about, O'Brien may have been resigned. Mayo and Mayo and Steve Belichick seemed to do an excellent job. Bill, just I don't know, like he like you said, the defense kept performing, but he was never able to gain the Belichickian advantage. Did you see any one game this year where you thought Bill coached circles around someone or gained that Belichickian advantage? I didn't. I don't remember. Um, well, the only one I might point to because I still don't really know how it unfolded um, was their lone home victory this year that included a Buffalo. comeback effort somehow. Yeah. On that day, Mac Jones was a good quarterback. Mike Gasicki was making plays to win games. They beat a, the a division champion four times, yeah. four time consecutive division champion. Mm -hmm. Like I'm still not like that early interception that Peppers drifted off like he's freaking Ty Law and zone coverage. Like the whole, I still don't really know how that played out that way. And I bet you Buffalo feels the same way. <laughs> right. Like how, who was this team? How the hell did they play? Like, Josh Allen was able to overcome a number of turnovers in the season finale in Miami Sunday night to pull off the win. Now, of course, they did have a special teams punt return for a touchdown, which kind of kickstarted things those for them count. and deflated Miami. They all those count as count. well. I know. I Who that team was on count, that day. If those didn't count, the Jets would have beaten you already before this mm -hmm. year. Would have been called last year. Several times. They're in. And finally, the quarterbacks. Um, I gave them a D plus. D plus. Are you the softest grader in the history of graders, or Might are you be. the softest grader in the history? I, of I think I, I think I am the puppy poo grader in the history of graders. Should I been. don't know how you can give this group anything but F. And I'm giving them credit for at times good energy, effort, and attitude. I thought Mac tried to start the year with good energy, effort, and attitude. I thought Bailey Zappi injected some energy, effort, and attitude into the yeah. team. They threw 21 interceptions. They did not average a touchdown pass per game. Yeah. They. Probably cool. should have had many more turnovers than that. They had some of the worst throws that I have ever seen on not an NFL field, 
any football field I've ever been on, including practice, by the way, because I, I rap Malik Cunningham had a, a throw in there that I still say made me wonder if he's actually right handed and is, is supposed to be throwing. And how many quarterback transact? <laughs> how many quarterback transactions were there? 20, 21, something stupid. Like, something and all these absurd. guys that we never saw. Ian Book was here. Then he wasn't. Matt Corral was here. And half the guys that were involved in those transactions. Trace McSorley. It got, it got weird, if you remember. Yeah. Like, which one of them had like a um, I don't want to make light of this, but like a a, a mental health Matt Corral. Thing. He had a little bit of a walkabout and then like, yeah, they were wondering. I blame this place and... for some of that. And I'm not even joking. I think this place was such a poop show. I mean, do you remember when Rourke uh, arrived and mm -hmm. we knew about it a day before Bill O'Brien did? He goes, actually, I just found out about that. And I'm like, it was it was widely reported yesterday. Everybody knew yesterday. The team didn't tell you they signed a CFL all-star to be your that third string the quarterback kind of the poop show going on on offense oh. behind the scenes. So I get the uh, communic how God, I mean, good communication is the key to success in any sort of relationship. How bad could things have been that even the freaking offensive coordinator didn't know they brought in a new third string quarterback. I mean, so yeah, Jay, it, it was, it was hey, abysmal, Zeus. and then you ended up with some of their quarterbacks being elsewhere, like Malik Cunningham's active, and and then even the Rourke thing to end the year. It's kind of typical and appropriate that it started the year with only Mac and everybody else was cut, and it ended the year with Mac benched as the emergency third stringer and some Canadian import named Rourke being the freaking backup quarterback. That's the other thing. He's a backup quarterback. Malik Cunningham's the backup quarterback in Las Vegas. If I could give less than an F, I'd give less than an F. I think I I think I probably gave them a D plus. It was an F to say the least. I think I gave them a D plus mostly in sympathy for the coaching that they received, the poor communication, the offensive line play, the lack of weaponry. Yeah, I think I did. I honestly, I think I softened up on my grade for the QBs for the environment and circumstances within which they had to try to operate and certainly were not able to succeed in. What is going on? I it, I know it's professional I, is, football. It's the National I, Football League. I Put understand. Well, they were not F. able to do. Yes, F. Fine. F. Okay. F. Them. <laughs> wow. All right, and there you go. There are your there are your season long grades for the New England Patriots. When what was just truly an absolute delight of a season. Just a. I have never been more relieved to see a season be over. Honestly, I joy if. If one were to have to pick an adjective to describe the season, I, I said we played that game Sunday night in the postgame show. Mine was joyless. Yes, I know there was the one home win against Buffalo, but there were so few highlights in comparison to so many head scratchers, so much frustration, so many wrong turns, U-turns, failures. Uh, it just was. It was just a joyless slog of a season, and I'm so glad it's over because now – there's hope, there's optimism, or at least there's some. And there are many questions that are swirling about Pats Nation, which we will get to in the second leg of our podcast coming up. Don't you go anywhere. It's time for a little Pats Puri here on Six Rings. All right, let's get to the latest uh, of everything else. Coaching rumors, Bill Belichick, everything else that's going on right now, Andy. Um, so we are recording this as of Tuesday morning, January 6, 7, 8, January 9, 2024. Bill Belichick delivered his season ending press conference on, excuse me, on Monday morning. He did a little Zoomer at 7 30 a.m. And oh, well, all right, for God's sakes. Is it, it cost four dollars. Nah, it was $3.99. Shut up, kid. Uh so uh, you're so proud of yourself. Uh so um the one thing that stood out, obviously, to everybody was that it was like the first time ever he said, you know, obviously, he still wants to coach football. He seems like he wants to coach football here. But he reminded everybody that he is under contract. Mm. That if if any in the wide world of Belichick, that's the biggest signal flare. That's the waving of a flag. That's the drawing of a line in the sand right there. That is pure Belichickian demarcation. I have a contract. So. You're not going to be able to just get me out of here. That is, see, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not leaving. I'm not effing leaving. Uh, we, he has not been dismissed. He was not part of the Black Monday proceedings. He has not been to date part of the Farewell Tuesday proceedings or whatever. Do you think he gets dismissed this week? And 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 will this continue to now slow play out? Because there doesn't seem to be a rush. And and we even read. Uh, I think it was Jeff Howe who reported on Monday there was a little convo between Belichick and Kraft, or at least part one of their get together. 
Yeah, there were. Um, they met on Monday. Uh, Bill, in his morning WebEx, predicted that it might be the first of a number of meetings between mm-hmm. he and Robert Kraft. Although he did also say, yeah, they met during the season. Not necessarily yep. talking about his future, but they they met, which I would hope. I mean, it's the owner of the team and the grand poobah wears all hats guy of the team. I would hope they'd meet somewhere along the way. Um, I do expect we will have more clarification some point this week. Um, but I also think you're right. He brings up his contract to say, um, "This, I have some leverage here. When I'm, I'm not just going quietly. You owe me whatever it is, twenty five million dollars. I have some say here. Um, and I, I've said this for weeks. Exit strategy. I wasn't sure how you could go through this because there's the year you're owed to him. There's where's he going to end up? Do you want to try to control that? There's can you get compensation? Which I believe you have to. I'm with Teddy Bruschi." Yep. You have to look out for the New England Patriots. The best interest of the New England Patriots is to get something for Bill Belichick if he wants to coach in Carolina, Atlanta, Dallas, Buffalo, L.A. I don't care where it is. I'm looking to get something for him. But how you um, work your way through those landmines, I made the um, comparison last night on the Rich Keefe show. This is like the separated couple that are still living in the same house and the dad's on the couch because his lawyer told him, no, 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 don't leave. That's Mm -hmm. abandonment. You got to stay. And the wife wants him out, but she can't kick him out. And it's like this weird gray, no man's land. There will be lawyers kind of um, maybe time period. Yeah. I, I don't know where we are. I, I could be back. We should also just throw that out. Or he could be back because there's rumors I, now that part of his plan is like, what if I bring back Josh McDaniels? Would that help placate Kraft? Because Kraft likes McDaniels. I've heard Ziggler bring back Ziggler and McDaniels. Right. Something remember, we should probably credit Mike Reese with because he started playing that tune like 10 days ago. Yep. I hate it. I think it's the dumbest solution I've ever heard in my life. So Ziggler you're like proved he can't overrule Josh McDaniels, but he's going to overrule Bill Belichick. Yeah. Good luck with that. This is a terrible plan with too many cooks in the kitchen. And when you have too many cooks, you know what you end up with a crappy meal. Ding, 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 ding. Exactly. Uh, we, uh, I, I celebrate, uh, well, I mean, football can be a group think as well, obviously, but you have to have your trusted voices and you have to know what everyone's role is and you have to have above all open minds. And I don't know if, Bill is open-minded to the idea of bringing other people back that had worked in the organization. If he wants a new, someone else new to think things through with. So are you a three strikes and you're out with, do you think third time's the charm with uh, Josh McDaniels? Like, why do we keep going back to the well? Like, why do we keep trying to like, Hey, we'll just bring Josh. I mean, the best quarterback play of the last quarter century in new England included Josh McDaniels. And that's not just Tom Brady. That's Mac Jones rookie year. He got the most out of Mac Jones. So, I know our guy Mike Cadlick thinks maybe you could bring Mac Jones back next year, and you could bring. I him back saw to that. Daniels. Jeepers creepers! Like, I don't know what we're doing here. I think it's all pure idiocy. It, it's disastrous. It. I, I don't see how. I've heard Scott Pioli could come back. I mean, all of these. Let's get Lombardi. Let's get Lombardi while we're at it. Dimitrov. I, let's just get the whole band back together. Yeah, because the more people, and the other aspect is, so Bill Belichick made it quite clear. He has final say in his press conference yesterday. He also tried to indicate, I'm for what's ever in the best interest of the football team. So if we Mm -hmm. collectively decided him taking on a lesser role, he kind of insinuated or implied he would do that. I don't think you can do that because I keep envisioning this meeting, this boardroom, this draft war room, whatever it is, where, Mm -hmm. yeah, Dave Ziegler's in charge of personnel and has final say, and he's standing at the head of the table. And he goes, so what we're going to do is we're going to do X, Y, and Z. And Bill is sitting over there on the side going, <laughs> that's the plan. <laughs> yeah. Or rolling his eyes or sighing. And Ziggler's like, uh, Bill, you don't, you, you don't like that. You don't like that plan, Bill. You did you want to try something different? You if Bill is in the room, he's the highest ranking football official in the room. It's just Correct. whether it's contract says it or not, he's Bill effing Belichick, right? You can't mm-hmm. just turn that off. You can't, you can't just because you give something in writing to Dave Ziggler say bill doesn't so i think it's stupid i think it, the, i i don't i'd rather see, have honestly, bill back on his own i'd rather have bill back on his own than trying to pretend okay that x is happening and y is it's not going to so work you, you have bill back on his own okay so let's say let's 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 quickly war games this one out so belichick let's say belichick returns craft meets with him jonathan right. says 
Jonathan says like, I think he should go dad. And Robert's like, I, I just can't do it. I, you know, I'm going to, I'd like him to try to get the record here. I, uh, you know, we'll, we'll give, we'll blame the quarterback. Mac Jones returning. Let's just say this also. If Ma if if it was announced Belichick's coming back, we're gonna get that split in Pat's nation. Like you got to be kidding me! I told you he was going nowhere. There's no better coach. What the hell? Things are so dysfunctional. If Mac jo if Mac Jones is he's not Mac Jones is not coming back if Belichick stays. Let's just be com perfectly clear. He couldn't. And I think if, he if, does, Mac, if if Belichick's back and Mac Jones is like getting into March and getting into April and he's still with the Patriots. Take away his belt, his shoelaces, and everything else of which he could do harm to himself with. Because he would God. be a broken, more oh. broken, who's already broken, broken man. So how quickly do you think? So at this point now, if you if Belichick were to return, would you do you believe there would be a new offensive coordinator? Um, I don't know what to believe now with all these rumblings See? and rumors. Yeah. And, and I don't think Bill's back. And the other thing that hit me yesterday, which I think I'm opposite everybody else. When I watched his WebEx, I don't think he wants to be back. I got the vibe he wants out. He's done. Like, he just can't do this anymore. And that the the I have a contract is simply a leverage play. It's yeah, not, that's it. It's not honesty. It's so not what, like now, what does he do. want? What does he, like, he doesn't want to do this anymore. What is the, he doesn't want to do this. Is he sick of this environment? What, what is he? Is he tired of Robert Kraft meddling? Is he tired think, of the yeah. fan base, the I, media, what? I think the meddling is overblown um, and overrated, but I think mm -hmm. for a guy who had full solo control for so long, even a little meddling is is overly annoying. Uh, like other co if Mike McCarthy and Bill sat down for a beer and Bill was like, I just can't work with Robert anymore. You know what he did? You know what he did? He wanted to replace Patricia with an offensive coordinator. And McCarthy, Can you? Like, oh God. McCarthy's like, that's it. You're mad over that. Like, Everybody in the football knew you needed to do that, Bill. Why Why would you be mad over that? Like, he, he just, because of the, where Belichick came from over the last 20 years, Yep, he's probably overly sensitive and annoyed at what's going on now. And I actually think that's similar to the Brady thing. I think once they started going tete-a-tete, -tete, Brady and Belichick, it was over. Then everything mm -hmm. annoyed the other one. Like, they it magnified little things. Little things became big things. And I think that might be where we are with Belichick and Kraft, but I think he wants out. Wow. I, I can't, I honestly, when you said, I don't know where I am with any of this anymore, like it for the average podcast listener, sports radio listener, et cetera, they, they want, de they want definition. They want hot takes updates. The latest I, folks, nobody knows what the hell is going on right now. I can't tell you if Bill O'Brien will be back or not, if he wants to be back or not. I can't tell you if McDaniels is coming to town, if that's a good, I, I can tell you, I think it feels like it going back to the well. I mean, if I say like, oh, third time's the charm, like, oh, let's just keep, what are we going to, we're going to just continue to pursue this to diminishing ends. Like how Josh McDaniels would have to groom a whole new quarterback and work with him while they bring in some sort of veteran and maybe work with Bill Belichick again. And like, I mean, Josh, like, here we go. Maybe he'll get a third head coaching job after he comes back and resuscitates the Pats offense all over again. Like, it just feels like this broken merry-go-round. People keep getting back on again, and eventually someone's going to get hurt or it's going to be a disaster. And you can't get much more disastrous than the Patriots offense has been the last two years. And my God, what the hell were the Philadelphia Eagles thinking hiring an offensive coordinator to coach their Terrible. defense this year? They get, Terrible what they, decision. they get what they deserve. When you put an offensive coach on the defensive side of the ball, you get what you deserve. Have you seen the numbers since like the, the, the guy that was calling defense for Sirianni who replaced Jonathan Gannon was not doing a great job. He certainly wasn't living up to Jonathan Gannon standards from last year. It's not the same defense as well. However, holy smokes, what has happened to the Philadelphia Eagles defense? Since Matt Patricia took over as DC of the PE OMFG, it is startlingly bad. And I also think, and, and, and that's he's true. no dummy. But I, I think it's tough to do that, especially when two guys are from different schools, different organizations. Mm -hmm. Like Matt is mid-year talent and techniques, and everything changes, and it just, I think that's really, really tough to do successfully. For Usually, sure. you don't notice as much. Because usually when you reach that point, it's a team like the Patriots that does it. It's not a team that's vying to get back to a Super Bowl, a team that's vying to win its division, a team that's vying to, you know, have success in the postseason. And we're seeing this on a national stage, and it's it's not going well. And it's uh, it's really hurting them. And 
it'll be interesting to see how it plays out in the postseason. But, um, yeah, from a Patriots perspective, I do Oof. think right now you got to rip the Band-Aid off. All these ideas, bring back McDaniels and Ziggler, like – they 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 wreak desperation, obviously, but they also, to me, I said, you know, I think Bill's old, and people get mad at me mm-hmm. when I say that. Like he's about to turn seventy two, right, this spring. So he's knocking on the door of well, he's chasing a moving target in Pete Carroll, the who will mm-hmm. soon be the oldest coach in NFL history. It was Romeo Cornell when he was in Houston a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, you bring the band back together to what end one more year of bill. And then what happens? Then they all like, yeah, then there's a bunch of blue crabs in the, in the bucket trying to kill each other for the job. Like I don't even, cause if you have McDaniels, Bill O'Brien and, and Gerard Mayo here and bill retires after the year, you have more chaos. In my opinion, you have more mess. You can't Mm -hmm. keep whoever doesn't. If Josh gets the job and Mayo doesn't, he's pissed. If Mayo gets the job and Josh doesn't, He's pissed. Would like, Mayo then bring in McDaniels to be his? I mean, Josh McDaniels has no leg to stand on right now in any room with any ownership group, with any group of players in any organization to say, like, I'm I'm the right man to be the next head coach. Like, you'd be lucky if you want to keep coaching football at the highest level in the United States. You'd be lucky to find an organization like the Patriots who would bring you back in because of the success you've had. Do you think go to maybe, college? I've said all along, Josh should go to college. A young Head Good coach look, in college or absolutely. Oh, he could get a head coaching job, a mid major, so? like not a mid major, uh, probably a major conference. There's only four of them left and yeah. a mid tier job. Um, and I think he'd be good at it. I think his authoritative uh, attempts would go mm-hmm. over better in college. You know, you, he can do the thing where his There's first meeting, Tom Brady him. zooms in. That uh, okay. He could coach. He could coach. I, he, he probably could. I'm just saying, like, he may be a little radioactive right now to bring into a collegiate program. Yeah. You can go in college football, you can go from radioactive to popular like that. It happens thank, all thank, I mean Steve for the Sarkeesian, transfer portal. Right. Steve yeah. Sarkeesian was a drunk that no one would touch. Now he's one of the best coaches in college football. He had his team mm-hmm. and the college football player. Bobby Petrino is like banging a volleyball player on the back of his freaking Harley and is untouchable. And now he's working his ranks back up. Why? Because mm-hmm. he can coach. He can coach right. offensive. Like you can go and Josh isn't that toxic. Do- no, Josh God, didn't no. have a, a scandal. He's just had a bad attitude, work. had a bad attitude yeah. and was entrenched in his ways. Right. So I would go to college if I were Josh. Probably not a bad idea, but I'd be like curious. The if job. Halfley, you, get out. You wonder though. If like, let's say, and who do you think right now is the leading candidate? I would say, I still think Mayo is like ahead by a whisker. And it's funny. Wow. You, you, you know, there was the leak yesterday. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I don't remember who exactly said it. I think it was Schultz. I think uh, the Schultz report, Jordan Schultz had that Mike Vrabel would potentially be interested in going to New England if he shakes free from Tennessee. Yep. To, I, I like the idea of Mike Vrabel being coach, especially if it doesn't cost the Patriots much. There's a whole bunch of, I think people just like, first of all, again, Twitter, X, Twix, whatever you want to call it. It's not real life in any way, shape or form. Gentle reminder. Nice. They were very mean to me yesterday. They're mean to me all the time to all the time. People, people are in the mood. Both of us, the hard old critic and the Homer. How can they be mean to both of us? Because people are in a mood and they, they want, they want their greatness back. And you know what? Tough shit, everybody. You don't just get to be awesome again immediately overnight. That's not how it works. Oh, how, how, uh, Mike Vrabel's a significant downgrade from Belichick. Okay. I said the tweet simply was if Bill is gone, I would like Mike Vrabel to be the coach. If Bill is gone, I'm not saying I want Bill gone and I want to issue Belichick in favor of Vrabel. I'm just saying if he's gone, I like the idea of Vrabel. He's his own man. He's a badass. He'd be entertaining. He knows football. I'm not saying three that- years younger. Uh-huh. Uh huh. That matters. And, would you and trade he- Vrabel for Belichick straight up? Yes. Because I was thinking about this. Bill has a home in Franklin, Tennessee, just outside of, of Nashville. And oh. remember, there was the loose rumors, reports, I don't even know what you call it, that the Patriots, I won't say Bill, the Patriots mm-hmm. had interest in Will Levis. And right. Will Levis is obviously the quarterback. And if he likes Will Levis, would he be wanting to go there where his mother lived and I believe spent her final days on this planet? Good point. Um, he likes Nashville. He loves the uh the bars and the music scene there he's a big fan of nashville um Mm -hmm. 
Would you make that trade just straight up? Change of scenery type trade. Both teams yep. get new coaches. Nothing else passes through. And to take a youth movement on for the coaching? Yes, because Bill can't have but a couple more years left. If he, if we knew, like you just speculated a few minutes ago, thinking Bill, Bill does want out, and this is all leverage and power play, the whole under contract, I'll come back and do what I'll do, and I'll listen to whatever's in the best interest of the football team. If you found out he definitively wants out and it's time to move Team Belichick away from Gillette and Patriots Nation into someplace else, yes, I would. I would, too. I, I would. I would take I, the and trade. I don't know if he would want I'd it. If he blow would kisses it. and wish him well and say, thank you so much, Coach, for, every, for a quarter century of awesome, even with the the lows that have been more predominant than the highs of recent. It has been a little bit thin around here recently. I would bit. take all of it gladly and say, okay, Vrabel, now you got a chance. You are on the biggest stage. You're following up your mentor, your old coach. Let's freaking go. And he he has the, um, I think he has the spunk or cachet or attitude or mm -hmm. confidence. He's, He's a cocksure balls, coach. Dude. He's an absolute cocksure coach. Yes, he is a ball. That's what I'm saying. He's his own man. He doesn't give an F. And to what ends he would be able to pull the program up from the ashes of and rebuild I it? I don't know, but I'd be willing to watch. I'll tell I'd you what, it all hinges on, and this is what I, I think is funny. I said this to Rich last night. We spend all this time on Bill and the coaching change and all of that. Um, the most important decision or decisions in my mind is who's controlling personnel and what do they do with the third pick in the draft? And right. if you nail that, there's a good chance, a really good chance, you nail your head coach higher because your head coach, if he's connected to, let's just say it's Jaden Daniels and Jaden Daniels blows up and he's a great leader and a, a, a modern dual threat quarterback and all of Dynamite those things. Playmaker, yep. Guess who's a better coach? Whoever you hire. I don't care if it's Josh McDaniels, Gerard Mayo, Mike Vrabel, whoever it may mm -hmm. be is a better coach under those circumstances. So that is actually probably the far more important decision this offseason that isn't really getting enough attention nailing the pick well because right now there's a big bright shiny object over here we have a whole coaching conundrum right now that has taken center stage and seems like it is going to drag out a while longer as well all right uh last couple things i just want to throw say out how there. long are we going here i know we're done um i just want to throw out there just for the record if people want to read about what trent brown had to say on the season he did a sit down with nesson's dakota randall he was not very happy and it began andy Back during the preseason or so, it seems, he got a firsthand look at what the Patriots were going to be like, and I think he checked out then. And that's when you said, well, if that's the case, you may as well have cut him before the season if he didn't want to invest himself in the season. And that's why you got the half-assed approach, attitude, and effort tops from Trenton Brown hmm. on the season as well. Too bad. Sorry, only $12 million wasn't going to be enough for you to at least give it an effort to earn a contract elsewhere. Trent? Uh, there's a fun story. I'll take story. the apologies by, from all the media members that mocked me and all the fans that mocked me yeah, at the time. You, you're not going to get it in. You, you won't no, get I know. it at all. We and haven't gotten really enough flowers. It. We were the first ones in town to say the hobo rumble, the bum fight at right tackle, Trent Brown's attitude, everything along the line was a cause for concern. Oh, shut up. You're just trying to get clicks and get engagement. No, we're not. We're, right. <laughs> doesn't, it doesn't matter. You and I, we're like, a, but we're like these. Can, if Greek can show sirens. Us how to get some clicks. That would be nice these days. We're the Cassandras or Diane, whatever the Greek reference and metaphor was that was like, you know, like no matter what is said, everyone just ignores, even though like uh, all the prophecies come true. Uh, you can read that. There's a really fun story on my timeline that uh, my buddy Bryson sussed out. The There's a great story behind the Bill Belichick, uh, the famous entering the Lions game gift that everyone has used time and time and time again usually to uh, no effect, sometimes sarcastically walking into the game. You know, the two kids that have their hands outstretched that he walks by, they yep. were actually Patriots fans. Yep. And they were there with their dad and they knew someone in the Lions and they gave him Lions gear. Belichick ignored him. They, the team found out. Bill had them come in. He took photos with them, autographed pictures for the kids. There's a whole great story behind it, which I think will kind of like shine a nice light for some people on Bill Belichick, the human being, and Bill Belichick, like the dad or grandfatherly figure. It's a really nice thing. Check it out. Um, it's on my timeline at Fitzy GFY. I smiled when I read the story. It was kind of cool. I did too. And Bill, we've always known Bill can be uh, personable and, and human and humane and all those things when he wants to be, which actually found a way onto my timeline last night when I was struggling to fall asleep after arriving home from the Rich Keefe show. Yeah. When somebody posted Bill Belichick's uh, retirement or whatever res resignation press conference as the HC of the NYJ. So I rewatched that again last night. The, it was like a 15 minute video. Mm -hmm. And I, the thing that jumped out is 
how much more personable and affable he was in that press conference, which may have been the low of his professional career. Oh, and resigning like, as HC yeah. at the NYJ? He's oh, smiling. he was great. He's making jokes. Yeah. He's like telling everybody, I'm going to spend time with my family this afternoon, but tomorrow I'll leave my number. Anybody that wants to talk to me, I'll talk. sit down, magazines, internet, anybody who wants to talk to me will talk. I'll answer any questions you might have. And I'm like, wait a minute. How at the lowest point of his career could he be a decent dude? And now after six Super Bowls rings, nine Super Bowls, greatness, now he's kind of an a-hole all the time. He's at his absolute grumpiest. Is this age? Is this the the Patriot effect? I, I, don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, because he, he probably was at his best then because he had an ace up his sleeve. He kind of knew like three weeks from now, I'm going to have like they were probably he still has an ace up his ago. sleeve. He's considered one of the greatest coaches of all time just because I like Paul Brown. And by the way, the trolls, when I said I didn't think he's the greatest of all time, went back to a tweet I put out like six years ago and were like, is this you? And it was a tweet that I put out in 2018 in the summer when I said, Brady, Belichick, whatever, are the best of all time in their back. Correct. Guess what? I was working for the team at the time. I may have been a little bit overly positive and optimistic that the band was staying together. And there's no shame in that at all. And I point this out if you're watching on YouTube right now. We had him as a guest on the program. Yes, he got the Mike Vrabel contract issue wrong. So so freaking what, everybody? Uh, people make mistakes. It's your ability to actually learn from them and never make them again that makes you a better person, coach, analyst, etc. Anyway, in Mike uh, Lombardi's book, Football Done Right, which is a great read and a 101 for the history of the game. Uh, he says that Bill Belichick is the third greatest coach of all time and that Vince Lombardi is, uh, I believe, the second best. And it was Paul Brown. Paul mm, Brown. Where have and you heard Mike, that before? Yeah. And if Mike Lombardi, consigliere and assistant to trusted friend, the ultimate fob, says that Belichick a, a, isn't the GOAT, that he's one of the greatest of all time, of course. God, honest. To and you know what annoys me is Brian Mori, your your boy. He all went right. after me. He's like, Bill's the greatest of all time. He's like, well, what did Paul Brown do? I don't really know much about him, but Bill, Bill's the great. Well, then do some research, you jackass. If you're going to say somebody is or isn't the greatest of all time and shoot down somebody else, you should probably know what the F you're talking about, right? You know who Babe Ruth is. You know who Ted Williams is. Go learn who Paul Brown is because Paul Brown basically brought everything that is modern football. You have football because of Paul Brown, basically. Right. And he's got yes. some Belichick to him where he got mad and created a whole new franchise because he was mad and stole their colors. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which is amazing. Even Belichick could probably tell you, like, oh, I'm yeah. just honored to be considered among the greats. But Paul right. Brown, like, Belichick could probably go on and on about it. Don't get him started. Um, oh, and by the way, uh, Kendrick Bourne put in his Instagram that um, he just, uh, in his stories, it was a picture of the stadium, and it said, hope to see you soon. He Me wants too. to be back. I do, too. I feel that way as well. All right. Hour and two and a half. Wow. That was a big Jesus. one. A little over. Hey, we got a lot. There's a lot going on. We got a lot to say. Don't blame me. You had just as much to say as I did, and then some. And you know what? The funny thing is, there's so much more to come. We'll talk about the weekend's playoff games in a couple days. We'll give you the latest on Bill Belichick. We'll start. We're not really sure what we're going to call any of these extra like draft pods. If we're going to be call call it like you are a patriot, or maybe Andy will do a side pod called with the third pick, so we can just start our engagement and debate as to what we think the the third pick. Like it's an and Irish on that note, everybody. <laughs> and on that note, everybody, that'll do for a robust, zesty, and big old Six Rings and Football Things podcast. Thank you, Turp, for helping put everything together. Good job, Hart. He's at Jumbo Hart. I am at Fitzy GFY. I'll be on the Rich Keefe Show tonight and tomorrow. And you'll be back on Thursday. And we'll be with you Saturday from 12 to 3. And then, of course, on Martin Luther King Day from 2 to 5 p.m. on Boston Sports Original 93.7 FM WEEI. Thanks for listening. We're a presentation of WEI Odyssey and 2400 Sports. Talk to you soon. And if anything happens with Belichick, if a decision is made, emergency pod coming right up your feed. So stay tuned and turn those notifications on. Good day. God bless. And as always, oh, pets.